Hey all, Ron here from Military Images Magazine with a new episode of Life on the Civil War Research Trail. You may recall last month I was at the Ohio Civil War Show in Mansfield and I came away with more than 100 scans over a weekend of meeting collectors and looking at some of their best images and making digital scans so that I could put them in future issues of the magazine. And part of the process, once I finish the scanning and once I'm back home, is to go through each image one at a time and catalog it. And that cataloging can take quite a while. The fact that I'm talking to you tonight about one of them over a month later, it gives you some idea. The good news is I'm getting towards the end of the collected scans. This particular image really caught my attention because of the incredibly unusual subject matter. As you can see, we have an officer and he is cradling a monkey. I cannot think of any time in my professional collecting history that I have seen a monkey. Now, was this monkey a mascot? And I should say a monkey with an officer from the 1860s. Was this monkey a pet? Was the monkey a mascot? And who is the gentleman with the monkey, the pipe smoking gentleman? Now, the back of this image provides some clues. We see a name and the name is J.W. Collins. And that appears to be period writing in pencil. You can also see it appears to be Lieutenant uh, and some other uh, letters that can't quite make out. And below it in more modern writing in red pencil is the identification. Um, acting third assistant engineer, John W. Collins, U.S. Navy, September 14th, 1864. There's some background information about his service record uh, and noting the monkey and the pipe. So that red pencil is written in much more modern times by someone who is taking a shot at identifying who John Collins was. Now, when I took a closer look at this image, a couple of things challenged the identification as a US Navy officer. If you look closely at the cuffs, the insignia, you can see a fairly thick ribbon going around his sleeve at the top of the cuff. And then there's a fairly thick or a thicker white circle on top of that, if you look at his cap, you will see what appears to be a wreath. And then there's something in the middle of that wreath and something above that wreath. Also, the shape of the cap itself, it looks almost more like a baseball cap from the 1880s and 1890s than it does a naval cap, which were a bit more proportioned. They were a bit more rounder and a bit more taller. And so I really came to question who was this individual? What does this insignia tell us about his uniform? And so I checked around a little bit online and couldn't find anything that really helped me to appreciate who he might be. But I became pretty convinced that he was not a U.S. officer because there is just no insignia from the 1860s that matches this. And I will throw this in. The Navy changed its insignia four different times during the Civil War period alone. And part of that was because the officer corps was changing as steam and steel were really advancing. All that technology was growing. So new roles were being created and they needed to have insignia to reflect the roles. So that partly explains the changes. Anyway, I emailed one of the senior editors of Military Images Magazine. His name is Ron Field, and I call him Ron F, since I'm Ron C. And um, I said, hey, Ron, I said, what, what do you make of this? Because it just doesn't look like it's American to me. Um, and he shot back pretty quickly. It looks like a British Royal Navy master, 
circa 1860 in an undress uniform. He also pointed out, if you look closely at the wreath on his cap, you'll see an anchor in the middle, but that little item that's above it is a crown. So sure enough, I went back online and started looking around and the style of the cap and the wreath insignia with the crown on top is a perfect match for an officer in the Royal Navy from the 1860s time period. Then I thought, well, let me do a quick check on newspapers.com to try to see who John Collins might be, keeping in mind that Collins is a, a fairly popular And I don't know exactly if this is the same John Collins, but check this out. There is a note here, and the newspaper is the Hampshire Telegraph and Naval Chronicle, and that's in Portsmouth in Hampshire County, England, and it dates from November of 1873. So we're probably, I'm going to guess, maybe five years or so after this photograph was taken. And under a news brief called Naval and Military News, there is a paragraph that mentions some men who were awarded medal for long service and good conduct. And one of those men is John W. Collins, who is the master at arms. There you go. There is the term master, which relates to the insignia of Her Majesty's ship, the Royal Adelaide. Now, I thought, well, let me take a look at the Royal Adelaide and see what I can find out. It turns out the Royal Adelaide was commissioned in 1828. It was a 104-gun first-rate ship of the line of the Royal Navy. And it was uh, in around 1860, uh, apparently it was um, uh, reclassified and became a depot ship. So... As of 1860, as a depot ship, it had lesser duties than a ship of the line. And so we do know that a man named John Collins, who was a master at arms, was on the Royal Adelaide in 1873. I, didn't, I haven't done enough research to find out where John Collins was prior to that time, but my guess is, based on this photograph and based on what we know, if it is the same John Collins, if this is John Collins, he could have been on a ship that was in the Pacific waters at some point, and he somehow came in contact with this monkey as, again, a mascot or perhaps a pet. We don't know. There's another possibility that the monkey was brought back from one of his pals to England and given to him while he was on the depot ship. These are still mysteries. There's still a lot of mysteries here, but I can say for certain that the insignia he's wearing, the insignia you see in this photograph, gives us a little bit of the story. It also tells us that he's a member of the Royal Navy and not the U.S. Navy, and with the name John Collins, it might be hard to pinpoint who exactly he was, but I do believe with some additional research and some uh, connections, some triangulation between the insignia, the, uh, uh, his name, and also any connection to the monkey, maybe being a Pacific connection, uh, might be able to reveal him, his identity, his true identity, and maybe even we'll learn the monkey's name. So that's all for today's episode. We'll see you again. Take care.